Well, good morning. Today's project is oil filter and oil change in my Allison 2100 MH transmission. I'm doing this in a 2005 Winnebago with a workhorse chassis W24. Pretty common combination with the 8.1 Vortec and the Allison transmission. But I'm wondering how many people are driving around and they just don't realize that you're supposed to change your filter on your transmission every 24 months. And here's the, the maintenance schedule from Allison on the 1000 and 2000 series. So right here, we for the spin-on filter, we're supposed to change it every 24 months. And for the oil, we're supposed to change it every four years. So I don't know how many people are doing that, but this might be a good reminder. Check your maintenance log, and if you haven't done this, uh, get her done. And also, of course, with the Allison transmission, you want to use the the uh, Allison approved uh, oil. That uh, was that called the T. See, I'm trying to think of the number. It's a four-digit number. No, no, my bad. It was the um, T T E S 295. That's the oil you want to be sure to use. Now, when I first got my RV, uh, it was because it was built in 2004. It originally uh, left the factory with Dextron transmission fluid in it. It did not have this uh, uh, type of fluid in there from the factory. It did not have the TES-295. So I had to do the double fill and drain process where you drain out the, the standard transmission fluid, fill it up with the, the TES-295, drive it a while, drain that, and fill it up again. And then uh, after you do that, it's pretty much got all the old fluid out. It's got all the new good stuff in it. So anyways, the tools I'm going to need today is not much. Just get your half inch drive, 15 millimeter socket, torque wrench, torque the, um, uh, the drain plug back up, oil filter wrench. Of course, get you a genuine Allison oil filter. It was only like 10 bucks for the genuine oil filter. And they warn you only put it, put it on their hand tight. Once it, the gasket touches, one full turn and that's it. Or you may damage the filter. So um, I'm going to get onto that, on, on that little project. And of course, there's a little thing I printed out online uh, it gives you the information and instructions tells you about the torque 22 to 30 foot pounds on the on the nut oh and that oil you may be wondering what did i pay for that oil, uh, the oil it's, it's not cheap it cost me 36.75 a gallon so i'm hoping i get by with two gallons i'm going to carefully measure it as i pour it out and uh, see exactly how much it takes and that's a, that's a tag of my model serial number off, off my particular transmission and I had that in my file, so I know. All right, so I am, I've already let it warm up. The, the oil transmission temperature is about 140 degrees, so it should be plenty warm. I'm gonna call under there and do a little draining and see how much oil Okay, I under the RV I am. And there's the nice Allison transmission. There's the oil filter up front. I've already broke it loose with my oil filter wrench. Now, because I've got this support brace here for my uh, jacks, when that oil comes out, it's going to make a mess. It's going to hit this plate and run this way and that way. There'll be oil everywhere. So I've got this little plastic shoebox thing here, and I'm going to try to carefully catch the filter and the oil and not make any mess. And then, of course, also there should be a magnet in there that we need to get a hold of and wipe it off to see if there's any metal or debris on it. So let's uh, try that out. Okay, as you can see, that little tr trick worked out really well. I just stuck my hand up there, unscrewed the filter, let it drop into that uh, plastic uh, oil catcher. And as you can see, it didn't drain out much at all. It's still dripping just a little bit. But that's, and I see, I don't see the magnet on the filter, so the magnet must still be up on the, on the transmission. So now I'll get my larger uh, oil catcher, and I'll take this plug loose here and drain, let it drain out. All right, there we go, we're draining out. That looks pretty good. I think this oil has, I'm thinking, about 30,000 miles on it. But uh, I'll let that drain for a while. And we'll see exactly how much comes out so I can carefully measure it and put it back in. Because, you know, sometimes it's tricky getting just the right amount of oil on these transmissions. Actually, I remember years ago, I accidentally overfilled this one. And it, it, and it spit out some oil from up top. And just while I'm under here, let me tell you, I had a crazy experience from that episode. I had a situation, I don't know if you ever get rid of this or not, 
But every time I would hit a dip in the road, my cruise control would disengage. It was crazy. It was go going on for a while. And what was, the only thing I could figure what was happening, I, I saw, I thought it was my brake switch. It wasn't the brake switch. But it turned out what had happened, when I overfilled the transmission, it spit some oil out the top, and it ran down into this, into this connector and, and the wires. And it was the weirdest thing. Going down straight, you'd have no problem. But whenever you hit like a, a dip in the road, like when you pass a bridge or come up on a bridge, and the suspension would squish, and you'd get that sudden movement, that's when it would disengage time and time again. And as soon as I took this connector off, I sprayed some cleaner on there, dried it all out, put it back together. That problem has never happened again. It's pretty strange, but that's what happened to me. So if you have a problem with your cruise control disengaging as you're going down the road, check this connector. Okay, so we'll finish letting that drain. And uh, we'll see. We have to put the plug in. Oh, it's going to fill that thing up in there. Okay, well, it's been about a, over an hour now. But all the what I'm gonna, gonna get out of it still dripping just a little bit. I just want to show you when I took the filter off the magnets, the magnet stayed up in there. So I'm gonna pull that down, take a white paper towel, wipe it off good, see if there's any metal or debris on it. We hope there's not. But sometimes people don't realize sometimes when you take the filter off, the magnet will stay on on the old filter and actually get thrown away. So you want to be mindful of that and make sure you don't throw away your, your magnet with the old filter and wipe it off and put it back in there. Okay, well here's my magnet. And I wiped it off. Just got a little bit of crud off of it. No metal flakes whatsoever. So that's a good thing. So I'm going to clean it a little bit better with some brake fluid. Not brake fluid, uh, brake cleaner. So I'll get her nice and shiny and dry. Stick it back up in there. Putting a, a new oil filter on there, and of course I'll put a little bit, of, I'll put a little oil on the on the O-ring or the gasket, rubber's gasket. When I, then when I screw it up there, that it, it re reminds you when you when the gasket gets seated, you want to only give it one full turn afterwards. Okay, as you can see, I went ahead and pre-filled the oil filter, and I cleaned up my magnet really good, and there's my drain plug ready to go back in. Um, also, something I did, I carefully measured. Looks like I've, put, I've drained out two and a half gallons, so I'll know exactly how much to put back in and not overfill it. But I like using a, a, a new clean container, so that way if there's any metal flakes or anything that came out during that drain, I would see it. But everything really looks nice and clean, so that's good to know. And no metal flakes on the magnet, so hopefully this transmission will be good for another 200,000 miles or better. Okay, all is done. I put my drain plug back in there. To Tortured up to uh, 28 foot pounds, screwed on the oil filter, one full turn after the gasket made contact. So all that's done. Now the tricky part is getting that uh, two and a half gallons back in that transmission. That's always fun with the, that small dipstick tube. Okay, so here's what I've come with, come up with to get this oil back in there. Got my long filter, got a little flex, flex to it there so I can bow it up. And it got me a clothespin on it right there so that enables me to Get my gallon jug in here just enough to pour it in there and it takes some patience because it's got such a small opening at the other end but eventually i'll get this two and a half gallons in there and we'll be done with this project all right well this project is finished i also wanted to show you look i didn't make a mess maybe one oil drop or two but you know for doing a transmission oil change that's not bad at all so anyway so now that you've watched this, you can go out and do your own. It won't take you no time at all. Keep it Alice and Pern. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.